Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we're checking out the D-Link XO AX Next Generation AX 1800. So, let's take a look. Very interesting box art. If it'll tell you anything, it'll tell you that this thing is super powerful. So this isn't the most powerful. It's probably about an 8 out of 10 as far as the power of D-Link units go. Anyways, let's open her up. Oh, I'm happy because it's very biodegradable. We got a card here. That shows you. Uh, username and password. I like to send these things in. Here we got the units. Oh, very nice, very nice. We have uh, four antennas, power cable, all the good stuff. No CD. Okay, let's see what we got in the back. We have power, power, the WSPS reset. That's where you plug your internet in. And of course, you get the four ports. And you got to look at the bottom. Very nice. These, uh, these D-Link ones particularly look like crazy futuristic spiders, I find. Let's get this thing plugged in, and we'll see how she does. Okay, I got her set up. Setup's very easy. You just scan this and follow the instructions. Very nice, very easy. And let's take a look at the Wi-Fi spectrum and where it has decided to put itself. Alright, so what I'm doing here is using Wi-Fi Analyzer to check the Wi-Fi channels that the D-Link has decided to put itself in. This is the 2.4, and you know what? We could have done worse. We could have done worse. It put itself neatly between uh, 4 and 8. You don't want to run in and to clash with other bands, but you do want to be within the same channels as the other bands. So that RS there is uh it's out for itself right now i've seen it do worse i've seen d-links do worse so this isn't bad let's switch it over to the 5g and uh we'll see how we've done that's nice that's nice it's definitely put it into its own area it could have taken up what that's a 32 to 144 but i can't complain man i've had some routers put themselves into some horrible channels but let's take a look at the app next folks so here's the app, super useful device. What I really like is it shows you the internet speed. And I want you guys to just go with that. That is my maximum inter spe internet speed right now. So you know what, I'm gonna come back to this. Later in the video, I'll go through this more. But right now what I wanna get into is top speed, computer to computer on the AX band. Let's see the best local transfer speed that I can get with this unit. Okay, so once again, this is my setup. Got my Alexandrian backup over here to the left. Got my workstation over here to the right. As you can see, I am rocking AX. And the router is right over there. So we got line of sight going here, folks. Let's see the fastest speed we can get. Alright, so here's the speed that I'm getting. Unfortunately, I'm not cracking the 30 megabytes a second that I thought I would be. I'm pretty sure I got speeds like this out of uh, AC cards. Still, this really isn't bad at all. This is unbelievably better than N. It isn't exactly phenomenally better than AC. Uh, I was expecting to be able to get about 25 megabytes a second, but, well, it is what it is. So here's the obligatory speed test from speedtest.net and it shows us once again that uh, this thing is so powerful that my internet isn't even keeping up with it. Normally with the AC and the AX uh, units, this is what I get. Um, the ping is a little bit high, but yeah, 150 megabits per second down, almost 10 up. Remember, a megabit is or a megabit is one eighth of a megabyte so remember when they say megs you know what you're talking about all right so the xoax 1800 is definitely a contender within the world of the wi-fi 6 but for 20 bucks less i get better performance personally out of my favorite asus um ac 1900 unit very good very fast we got some ultimate performance ac and when i was doing local transfers i was getting a better speed by about one third for 20 bucks less but still we got a contender and one of the awesome things about the echo ax is it is x mesh meaning this unit meshes perfectly with the ax uh, 5400 that i bought previously so now i actually have enough range that i can get a signal into my daughter's room once again i'm in a townhouse and 
with no single unit, this has been a $300 unit, and with no single unit, can I make it, can I make a signal to my daughter's room? I'm at the back of the basement, and her place is uh, in the front of the second floor. So it just goes to show you, either put your access point in the middle of your place or get mesh. I would definitely recommend mesh. So here we can have a look on Wi-Fi analyzer to see how the mesh network has set itself up. And unfortunately, it looks like it's crossing the streams a little bit. Once again, you don't want your arch to arch into anything else. You want your arch to be all to itself. And my mesh is between 4 and 8 and 7 and 11. It's also conflicting with my standard regular Wi-Fi, your fault. I keep that one around for the wife because, of course, when us guys are messing around with the Wi-Fi, we can mess around with our spouse's internet. And sometimes that's done at your own peril. So next up, I want to go to the main floor. Right now I'm in the basement. I'm going to go to the main floor and we're going to have a look at the, the range. So now I'm at the front of the house on the main floor. All these access points meshed together are in the back. And it looks like we're getting a reasonable signal. Now let's go up to the place where I get the worst signal up to my daughter's room in the front on the second floor. So here we are in the front on the second floor. And for once, I'm finally getting Wi-Fi over here. Once again, showing that uh, you need a mesh network. You just need a mesh network. However, it definitely seems like on the 5G band, I'm doing much better, and I'm sharing a nice band. There doesn't seem to be any way that you can change these on your own. It is what it is. You turn it on, it figures it out, and it doesn't change for anything. So the 2.4, once again, is looking kind of messed up. I don't like the way that looks, but the 5G is definitely working on this mesh network of um, routers. So here's a speed test for my daughter's room, and I'm totally happy with that. I get above 2.4 GHZ uh, speeds, and that's freaking awesome. So let's have a quick look at the options within the app. Here within the network, we can see I have two units, the router, and then this extender unit, the 1870, that I just set up. Over on the right, we can see the clients, and that's everything that is plugged in. And if you do one more click, you can turn on parental control and you can create a profile that you can use to control your network or to watch over your network. Nope. Oh, wait. Yes, I did. Abandon it. And yeah, quality of service. All that fun stuff available here. Back a little bit more. Of course, you can see the internet test speed at the bottom. Top right is where you get your actual uh, settings. The wizard is if you want to set it up or change it. Within the Wi-Fi, we can see the password. And within the internet, we have all of our uh, IPv4 or VLAN. And over on guest Wi-Fi, this is where we go if we want to enable the guest Wi-Fi. You can also do that over um, Google Home or Amazon Alexa. And once again, you can see the clients here. You can uh, make, set up parental control within your management. You can do even more. You can see the device name, the hardware version, um, hardware version about, change device, time zone, and there's even quality of service. I know that I've seen quality of service in here. Maybe you have to log in directly to the unit. There must be quality of service on here somewhere. It's got to be here. It's got to be here. It's got to be in uh, the web-based version. So this is the web-based interface user setup. This is what we got going on. It's, uh, it's coming in as the main router and not the router that I'm particularly reviewing. The unit that I'm reviewing isn't even coming up as an extender. It's, uh, it is not exactly an extender. It's a router being set up as an extender with mesh, but oh, whatevs. Anyways, no USB device. I have five clients plugged in if you come up to features you can check out quality of service engine and then you know you put uh, your your the things you want in the highest you know the stuff you know you'll use over there and then you put your wife's phone over here 
I'm just kidding. You put your wife's phone over here. <laughs> and then you put the kids' tablets over here because you get those guys happy. And then you can go back to doing whatever you do. You can go back to doing your own stuff. So once you get your USB plugged in, you got to figure out what kind of sharing you want to do. If you want to do uh, FTP style, Windows file sharing. But that doesn't have anything to do with this particular router because I just remembered it doesn't actually have a USB plug-in. So that's about it from me. Is a unit worth its money? Yes, especially if mesh is the kind of thing you want. If you have a big home, if you got a lot of kids, you got a lot of people jumping on to watch Power Rangers or whatever, then you definitely want uh, a more expensive unit and you want to go with the mesh, especially if you're in a bigger house and you can't put your unit exactly in the middle. But if you, if you have a router, you're going to want to put it in the middle of your place. And if you have problems getting signals uh, out there, you're going to need to use the mesh 100%. Definitely recommend the mesh all the way now if you have a little place once again i think you just might be uh better going off with uh that uh that asus ac unit lots of good things to be said about asus folks it should also be said that some of these units uh, are better at dealing with multiple users than others anyways that's it for me now from nabs tech but like and subscribe if you like this stuff i have a link to this unit in the description and give that a click if you can for me. That's it for me. Have a good one, folks. Most importantly, take care of each other.